This is where I'm from, this is where it started This is what becomes of the broken hearted This is going out to... Hey, bonjour! Me manda in the shop em da nungwa Even the squonquit and dijna kaz Mwa soxing don jaba Gosh again, shish Bzan yan How? Squonquit and dijna kaz Indigenous cause, indigenous cause. We in gen cause, nin indigenous cause. Gin indigenous cause. Ophelia gen cause, ma bagage again shish. Ophelia, bonjour Kedan, bonjour, <laughs> bonjour Kedan. Oh. Ophelia Jincaza uh, Oh gosh again shish Oh Oh indigenous cause Gidigna cause Jincaza Now how? Now how? I don't need wa soxing don jaba Don jaba Need don jaba Gin Gidon jaba Njaba Win Now how? Now how? Njiba Njiba Magi Unjaba Nin Ndon Jaba Now I wanna ske Mi Baba Beto Jish Quag in a gun Beto Jish Quag in a gun Beto Jish Quag in a gun Mi Manda Bitosh Kaj gun. Bitosh Kaj gun. Bito Jish Quag in a gun. So I bring this up because the words are very similar. Bito Jish Quag in a gun, meaning pie. Bitosh Kaj gun. Underwear. If you can't tell what that's supposed to be. Doesn't really look like underwear. Going didn't tell him it was in So they're very similar, and the Bito part has to do with uh, layering. As you know, that's how you make a pie and underwear are layered in your clothing. So, Bito Jish Quag in a gun means pie, and Bito Shkaj Gun means underwear. And I know out in Minnesota, I've got some friends out there, I've learned out there a bit. Their words for those two are even more similar. So, Bito Shkaj is pie, out that way, Bito Shkaj and underwear is Bito Shkaj so they're very similar and they're easy to mix up and I've done it before trying to speak in the one mix them up and it ends up being pretty funny so there you go Bito Jish Quag in a gun Bito Shkaj gun Nahau 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 Nishke Mi Manda Gjab Kiz gun Gjab Kiz gun Gjab Kiz gun Nahau Good on you. Good job, kiz gun. Mage, good job, kiz a gun. Good job, kiz gun. Good job, kiz gun. So, meanwhile, we jagnashim. Good job, kiz a gun is a stove. And this word is another one of those examples of how Nishnabe one's very descriptive. Um, the gij part relates to heat. The abic has to do with being metal or made of a mineral the kiz part of that i think kiz the z <laughs> or the is part i'm sorry kizab kiz gun the is part has to do with acting upon something with heat and the gun on the end you'll hear that on a lot of words that's what's called a nominalizer and it makes a noun out of uh, various words so we put that all together kizab kiz gun Mage job kiz gun. That's how we speak around here. Drop uh, certain short vowels. Job kiz gun. That means a stove. But in the Shnabe one, it's very descriptive. It's explaining exactly what it is. Gijab kiz a gun. Now how? Now how? Now mimanda mkumi ta swin. Mkumi ta swin. If you can't tell what that's supposed to be, it's a fridge. Mkumi ta swin. Mkumi ta swin. Uh, another word I've heard for it is the kissage gun. The kissage gun meaning something that cools. 
things. But around here, people say makumi ta swin, and the makumi has to do with ice. Ta swin can mean like a cupboard or something along those lines. So back in the day, even in English, people called them an ice box. People used ice boxes, which could be a makumi ta swin. These days, we say makumi ta swin or the kiss jagun for a fridge. So there you go, another kitchen word for you. Makumi ta swin. Now, so this week we were talking about kitchen words, things you can use uh, in the kitchen. And there are many words for cooking in the Schnabimwen. Uh, the general word that we use around here is jibakwe. It means he or she is cooking, jibakwe. In other places that has implications of being cooking in a certain way. And there are so many words in the Schnabimwen around cooking that uh, I only know a couple and it varies from place to place. Anyways, jibakwe, we've talked about that one before, means he or she is cooking. But if you want to talk about cooking something in particular, there's also words around that. But one that I've heard is uh, minzan, minzan. So that could, so that means cooking something. I would say minzan mijim. I'm cooking the food. Minzan mijim. Minzan mage minzan. And so that's cooking something in particular, something inanimate. And if you want to talk about cooking something animate, you would say Nemizawa. Nemizawa, I'm cooking it, the animate thing. So you would say Nemizawa pin, I'm cooking the potato. So for plural, it would be Nemizawa, Nemizawa, Nemizawa panik. Animate thing, Nemizawan, more than one, it would be Nemizawan un. So just a little bit of um, transitive verbs for you. Those are verbs that have action on, on something. Jibakwe is intransitive, just means cooking in general. And you say Naminazan, you're talking about cooking something in particular. Now, now. Now, the phrase we did on Friday was Gajibakwon. Gajibakwon. And that means I will cook for you. Jibakwo meaning to cook for somebody. So as you know, we've talked about these transitive verbs, many different ways of conjugating them, like me to you, you to me, them to us, him or her to you. There's so many different combinations. It's hard to learn them all. So we just stick to the easy ones. So for me to you on an intransitive verb, the pattern would be ge, then the verb, then in. So it'd be gejiba kwa win. And that's kind of, um, I don't know, changes to <laughs> and if you want to say, so that means I'm cooking for you. If you want to say, I will cook for you, you would say, so there you go. Something you can uh, say to your friend, girlfriend or boyfriend or anybody. If you want to be nice, you can say, I'll cook for you. Gadon Web, you should rest. I'll cook for you. Now, now, me you. Me what you gonna wab to Meg. Party from a life so young, it was barely started. This is going now to the mama's crying, cause the son's gone home with the angels flying.